Dr. Sage here with a second of five videos discussing aerobic cellular respiration. In this video, I'm going to go over a big picture overview about the process of aerobic cellular respiration, and then we're going to go into the first main stage of aerobic cellular respiration, which is called glycolysis. So the big, big picture is we want to take the energy that's in glucose and transfer that energy into the cell's rechargeable battery called ATP. So you're taking a large molecule of glucose, it's about six carbons, breaking it down into much smaller molecules, carbon dioxide, where each one is only made out of one carbon. Since you're breaking it down, it's catabolic, which is gonna be exergonic, it's gonna be releasing energy. The cell is gonna capture that energy to charge up ATP. Aerobic cellular respiration is not one chemical reaction, it's literally dozens. But if you were to summarize it into one chemical reaction, what's overall happening is you're taking glucose, this large molecule here, and then in the presence of oxygen, you're breaking glucose down into carbon dioxide and water and energy, which that energy is then going to be used to generate ATP, the cell's rechargeable battery. For most of this series of lectures, we're going to be focusing on aerobic cellular respiration, which is one way of generating ATP. There is another way of generating ATP, which is a process called fermentation. The advantage of fermentation is it does not require oxygen. However, there's a huge disadvantage, which is it does not make hardly any ATPs. Okay, we'll talk about fermentation at the end of this series of video lectures. So for the next couple of videos, we're gonna be talking about aerobic cellular respiration. All right, something to note about aerobic cellular respiration is that molecule of glucose is actually storing a lot of energy. Your cell does not take that glucose molecule and have it release all of its energy all at once. Because something that takes a lot of energy and releases all of it at once, what that is, is an explosion. And you don't want little explosions happening inside your cells. So instead of that, what happens is you take the glucose molecule and you release a little energy, then a little more energy, then a little more energy. And then you add up all that energy to make a bunch of ATP molecules. This is analogous to this model I gave you in a prior lecture about water passing through this system here. Okay, as water passes through the system, it can be used to do a little work. Okay, then the water uses to do a little more work, then you use the water to do a little more work. Okay, that's analogous to what's going to be happening during aerobic cellular respiration. The energy from glucose is going to be released in a series of small steps. Okay, so for aerobic cellular respiration, it is literally dozens of chemical reactions and they're divided into three main stages plus a minor stage. The first main stage is called glycolysis. Okay. What you're going to do is you're going to take that glucose molecule that's built out of six carbons and you're going to break it in half into now two molecules which will each have three carbons. Those three carbon molecules are called pyruvate. That's the first main stage called glycolysis. Then you have the minor stage called pyruvate oxidation. Pyruvate oxidation takes pyruvate that you just made during glycolysis and turns it into acetyl-CoA, a different molecule. Why do you need to do that? Because the first stage glycolysis ends with pyruvate, but the second main stage of citric acid cycle starts with acetyl-CoA. So you have to turn pyruvate into acetyl-CoA. The citric acid cycle, which is the second main stage, will complete the breakdown of what started out as glucose all the way down to carbon dioxide molecules, releasing all of its energy. But you haven't made much ATP yet. So then you have the third main stage, oxidative phosphorylation, which is made up of the electron transport chain and chemiosmosis. And that's where you make the vast majority of your ATP. So what I just said, I'm going to repeat that, but in figure form. So the first main stage of aerobic cellular respiration is called glycolysis. Glycolysis happens inside the cytoplasm, not inside the mitochondria. Glycolysis takes one molecule of glucose and breaks it in half into two molecules of pyruvate. Now, since you're taking a molecule that's about six carbons, break it in half into two, three carbon molecules, that's going to be catabolic, which is going to be exergonic. It's going to be releasing energy. The cell's going to then capture that energy to charge up some batteries. It's going to charge up two NADH, those electron carriers, and two net ATP. Okay, so that's the first main stage, glycolysis. Then you take this pyruvate 
and you bring it into the mitochondria. In the mitochondria, you'll then do the minor stage called pruvate oxidation. Pruvate oxidation will take this molecule pruvate and turn it into this molecule acetyl-CoA. Along the way, you're also going to release carbon dioxide as waste, and you're going to charge up a couple of batteries, two NADH electron carriers. Now that you have acetyl-CoA, you can feed it into the second main stage called the citrus acid cycle, also called the Krebs cycle. Uh, and the citric acid cycle will complete the breakdown to carbon dioxide, releasing all of the energy. That energy is then used to charge up batteries, six NADH, two FADH2s, and two ATPs. So now glucose has been broken all the way down to carbon dioxide, releasing all of its energy. But most of the energy is not yet in ATP. You've only made four total ATP so far. Most of the energy is in these reduced electron carriers, these batteries. But it turns out your cell doesn't really like these batteries. So then it takes those batteries and brings it into the third main stage called oxidative phosphorylation which is made up of the electron transport chain and chemiosmosis. It takes the energy in these batteries and drains their energy to make a lot of ATP, about 28 ATP from that one molecule of glucose you started with. So overall, if you add it all up from one glucose molecule, you make about 32 ATP. Now why it's about, that's the detail of whether things have to be pumped into the mitochondria. Don't worry about that detail. Just know it's about 32 ATP total. All right, so right now you are probably utterly confused and that's okay. This is just the big picture. I'm trying to give you a big picture overview. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through each of these stages of what happens during glycolysis. Pruvate oxidation, citric acid cycle, oxidative phosphorylation. And as we learn about each of them, then you'll better understand this big picture. And I'm gonna go over the big picture several more times throughout this series of video lectures. So if you're confused right now, that's okay. This is just an overview to try to lay the foundation or the groundwork for the rest of this series of uh, video lectures. But keep in mind, as we're going through this, there's gonna be a lot of little, little details. Keep in mind like the big, big picture. The big, big picture, what you're trying to do is you're trying to take the energy from glucose and use that energy to charge up ATP. That's the big picture. You do that through a series of steps. The series of steps you need to take to move the energy from glucose into ATP is called glycolysis, pruvate oxidation, citric acid cycle, and oxidative phosphorylation. Those are the series of steps you have to take to move the energy from here into here. Now, in regards to making ATP, there's also a couple of different methods you can use to make ATP. Those are called oxidative phosphorylation versus substrate level phosphorylation. Okay, in this big picture, this last stage where you make most of the ATP, that ATP is being made by a process called oxidative phosphorylation. Okay, I'm gonna describe that in a later lecture. Okay, so we're gonna learn exactly what that means in a later lecture. You also make ATP by a method called substrate level phosphorylation. Substrate level phosphorylation is used during glycolysis and during the citric acid cycle. So that's when, when you use substrate level phosphorylation is glycolysis and the citric acid cycle. What substrate level phosphorylation is? Okay, that's when you have an enzyme and that enzyme is going to take a phosphate off of a substrate, stick that phosphate onto ADP. Remember, ADP has two phosphates. You're going to take another phosphate and add it onto ADP. Well, that then turns it into ATP. So that's all substrate level phosphorylation is. The name sounds more confusing than it really is. Substrate level phosphorylation is when you're using an enzyme to take a phosphate off a substrate, stick that phosphate onto ADP, which then turns it into ATP. That's what it is, okay? When it's used is during glycolysis and the citric acid cycle. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna start going through the different stages of aerobic cell respiration. The first one is the one we're gonna talk about in this lecture. The other ones we'll talk about in other video lectures. 
Okay, so the first main stage is called glycolysis. Keep in mind, um, we're talking about glycolysis. So this is your little map up here to keep track of what we're talking about. We're talking about glycolysis. Okay, glycolysis, that name is actually telling you what's happening. Okay, so glyco, glucose, and lysis means break. So what it's doing is it's telling you you're taking a glucose molecule and you're breaking it in half, okay? So this glucose has six carbons. You break it in half into two molecules that will now each have three carbons. Those three carbon molecules are called pruvate. Now, glucose had a lot of energy. These two pruvate molecules are still storing a lot of energy, okay? But since you're taking a bigger molecule, breaking down into two smaller molecules, you're also gonna be releasing energy. The cell is gonna capture that energy to charge up some batteries. Okay, it's gonna charge up two net ATP and two NADH. Glycolysis does not require oxygen and it does not release carbon dioxide. Now, the reason I pointed that one out is because today we're gonna to learn why you breathe, okay? When you're breathing, what you're trying to do is you're trying to take in oxygen and you're trying to release carbon dioxide, okay? So today you're gonna to learn why you need oxygen and why you're releasing carbon dioxide waste, but, that doesn't have to do with glycolysis. Glycolysis does not require oxygen. It does not release carbon dioxide waste. Okay, now glycolysis, even though that sounds really simple, you take glucose, you break it in half, you charge up a few batteries. Okay, it's not one chemical reaction. It's actually 10 chemical reactions. And those 10 chemical reactions are divided into two phases. Okay, the first phase is called the energy investment phase. The second phase is called the energy payoff phase. Okay, and again, you're probably confused. I'm gonna repeat this, okay, a couple of times. Okay, so again, glycolysis is not one chemical reaction, it's 10 chemical reactions, each one catalyzed by a different enzyme. The first five chemical reactions are the energy investing phase. Why do we call it the energy investing phase? Because you actually have to use up or spend ATP. You turn ATP into ADP. The last five chemical reactions are the energy harvesting reactions. That's where you get the charged up batteries, NADH and ATP. Overall, for one molecule of glucose, you get two molecules of pruvate, which are still storing a lot of energy at the end of glycolysis, two net molecules of ATP, and two molecules of NADH. This is actually glycolysis. Glycolysis is 10 chemical reactions, each one catalyzed by a different enzyme. For example, the first reaction, you take glucose, use an enzyme called hexokinase, turn glucose into glucose 6-phosphate. That requires energy, so you're using up ATP. That's the first reaction, okay? This is glycolysis, turn glucose into two molecules of pruvate. But this is not the level of detail you need for bio-1 stay in biology, take like biochemistry, you'll probably have to learn each of these intermediate molecules, each of the enzymes are used to make them and which one and what's happening to like the ATP during this process. You don't need to learn all those details for this class. One of the things you need to get out of this series of video lectures is what level of detail do you need? Because if you read your textbook, it will teach you all of this if you really want to learn all of this, but this is for a more advanced class. The level of detail that you need for this course is what are the inputs and what are the outputs for each of the stages? For example, for glycolysis, first you should know that glycolysis happens in the cytoplasm, not inside the mitochondria. Second, you should know that glycolysis does not require oxygen and it does not release carbon dioxide. Third, what you should know is that it's made up of two main stages, the energy investment phase and the energy payoff phase. Okay, each of these are five chemical reactions. You don't have to know what the chemical reactions are. During the energy investment phase, you start with one molecule of glucose and you're gonna spend 2 ATP. You're going to turn 2 ATP into 2 ADP, which doesn't make any sense because remember the big picture, the whole purpose of this is to make ATP. Well, here you're not making ATP, you're getting rid of it, which is the opposite of what you want to do. Okay, well, the way to kind of think about that is it's kind of like that old saying, you got to spend money to make money. Okay, well, you got to spend ATP to make some ATP. So during the energy investment phase, you're spending 2 ATP. 
Then during the energy payoff phase, you're making four ATP. So that's why I said in net, you make two ATP because you have to spend two to get four. If I give you $2 and you give me $4 back, I didn't make $4 profit, I made $2 profit because I had to spend two to get that four. Okay, so that's what's happening with the ATP. You're also making two NADH and two molecules of pruvate. And pruvate is still storing a lot of energy. So overall from glycolysis, one glucose molecule will give you two pruvate that's storing a lot of energy, two NADH and two net ATP. Make sure you know why it's two nets, because you have to spend two to make four. So that's kind of the big picture of glycolysis, but you don't have to learn all these details. Make sure you know this kind of big picture. Happens in the cytoplasm or cytosol, does not require oxygen, does not release carbon dioxide. One glucose is broken down into two molecules of pruvate. Pruvate is storing a lot of energy. Plus two NADH are charged up, plus two net ATP. Why two net? You have to spend two to make four. Okay, and that's the first main stage of aerobic cellular respiration. Now that we have this pruvate, it's gonna be brought into the minor stage called pruvate oxidation, which in the next video lecture, we're gonna talk about pruvate oxidation and the citric acid cycle. So until then, this has been Dr. Sage.